بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه أما بعد The interest money is haram for you to use or utilize or benefit from and scholars say you have to dispose of it in order to cleanse your wealth and one of the means of doing so is to give it to the poor and to the needy with the intention of cleansing your wealth as you will not be rewarded for it so don't give it away thinking that Allah will reward you for this no you're sinful for acquiring the interest in the first place so disposing of it giving it to the poor is permissible inshallah but without anticipating any reward you're just you're kidding me yeah this needs a workshop the do's and don'ts this is unapplicable in, in my view but generally speaking do's you have to fulfill your obligations and responsibilities to your spouse don't you have to avoid dhulm and doing what goes against these uh, responsibilities and duties and Allah knows best Allah Azza wa Jal does not hold us accountable for what we have no control over. Someone says, Wallahi, I was involved in a car accident and the car rolled over and I was out of uh, a conscious and all of a sudden the paramedics came and they took off the hijab and they exposed my body in order to save my life. Am I sinful? Of course not. This is something that is not within your grasp or reach or control. Likewise, if you're sitting in the comfort of your home and one nan mahram barges in or your brother comes in with his cousin, with his friend, without knowing that you're in the room and they see you, there is no sin on you. And no one in his right mind would say, always be in your niqab and hijab, even if you are in the comfort of your own room. But of course, if you go to your grandmother's house, if you go to your relative's house, and you're insecure, you don't know when people will jump in, no, you have to be protective. If you are in a secure room and it's locked, or you are with the family members of the house and they say, no one will come, and they assure you, you're protected. There is no sin on you, inshallah. This is something that you have to work on because this is each and everyone's test from Allah. The environment we put ourselves in dictates whether we will have a prosperous and faithful and religious experience or otherwise. So you surround yourself with people who don't pray, with people who curse, with people who commit sin, on daily basis, what would you expect your Iman to be? In the dungeons and in the sewer. But if you surround yourself with righteous people, with hafiz of the Quran, with students of knowledge, with practicing Muslims, by default you have to elevate yourself to their level and you will find that you are increasing in knowledge and Iman. So you have to Decide what you want to be. <clears throat> the next question is Islamic times say that the Prophet was on six sins about his variable depending on the individual. But the Prophet will distribute one to his six. How is this policy? But what? The Prophet will distribute his six. No, if the Prophet 
given over an investment is fixed, this is riba. Anyone who takes money from you says, give me <clears throat> 10,000 KD and I will invest it for you. And every month I will give you 500 KD, fixed. This is riba because the percentage can be fixed of the profit, not of the capital. So if I'm investing 10,000 KD and you give me 10% profit from the 10,000 KD, this is a fixed uh, uh, percentage over the capital. This is riba. The right way of doing it is saying, Akhi, whatever profit I make, I'll give you 10% of it. So if it is 500 KD, I will give you 50. Next month is 1,000, I'll give you 100. Next month, I have no profit, I'll give you zero. This is permissible because it's a percentage from the profit, not from the capital invested itself. And whenever an investment guarantees there is no loss, give me 10,000 KD and I'll invest it. If my project loses, I will give you the 10,000 back. This is complete riba because it's an actual loan that you're giving it back to me, 10,000 as it is, and the profit is interest. So this is totally haram. Next question is, if he has a green light from Allah that his repentance was accepted? No, he doesn't. Uh -huh. That was supposed to be a joke. The next question. Did you get it? Yeah. Okay, alhamdulillah. <laughs> so the answer is, of course, you have to ask Allah for repentance and forgiveness till the end of time. You don't know whether Allah accepted it or not. Shaitan wants you to feel safe and secure. But you have to all the time ask Allah for forgiveness and to repent, not to feel despair. Oh, Allah is not going to forgive me. I'm going to have. No. But all the time, be optimistic, think positive, and continue to be balancing between hope, Allah accepted my repentance, and fear, he may not have accepted it. This is the balance between fear and hope. <clears throat> And the jinn. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Fattakullah Mastapatum, fear Allah to the best of your ability. It is not an XYZ responsibility to spread it to Amazon or to eBay or to whatever platforms they are looking at. We are talking about spreading Islam to the best of your ability. In your office, I'm meeting people, I'm spreading Islam. On social media, people are following, I'm spreading Islam. And I travel for a business meeting, when I travel for ledger, when I go back home, I spread Islam to the best of my ability. No one says, Oh, you have to devote your summer vacation one month and go to the jungles of Africa. You're not Abdul Rahman al -Sumet. May Allah have mercy in his soul. This guy is dedicated. He was gifted by Allah Azza wa Jal. And he wa had the willpower, the money, the ability, the charisma to do what a thousand like me can do. No one can do what he did. So each and every one of us, we can't be clones of one another. No one can say, okay, I'm going to be tomorrow, inshallah, Sheikh Asim. I'm going to give lectures. I'm going to participate in, 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 in TV uh, series. Or tomorrow I'm going to be Dr. Zakir. I'm going to have a debate with the Pope. Not everyone is qualified. Not everyone is qualified to be, okay, I'm going to be Elon Musk. I'm going to be the greatest businessman, uh, the billionaire. I'm going to be this. I'm going to be an athlete. 
I'm going to be, no. Each one, Allah blessed him with his own gift, his own ability, utilize this. Because this is what Allah will ask you about. Allah will not ask you, why didn't you give khutbah Jum'ah last week, last week? I'm not qualified. I don't have the guts. If I go to the pulpit and say, Alhamdulillah, I'll faint. I'll faint. I know people who did this. In a khutbah, in a Jum'ah Friday, the khatib did not come. So they looked in the front row, the first, the biggest beard, and the guy comes regular to Fajr, said, Akhi, give khutbah. We, we, we stranded, so, okay. He said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and sat down. Imam, the mu'adhan gave the khutbah, the adhan. Then, finished the adhan, the guy stood up, looked at the crowd, <laughs> fainted. We were scared. Some people can't even say Alhamdulillah, they start to cry. <laughs> Take it easy, what's, what's wrong with you? It's a gift. Not everyone is, and it's not a deficiency or oh Allah is not a real man. No. Everyone is qualified to do things that people cannot do. So you search yourself. What do you have that you can excel and come closer to Allah? You might be the best manager. You can manage events. You can manage shuyukh coming, making conferences, lectures. You can be a facilitator. You can be a good accountant. So, okay, we can run this event with minimal expenses. You can be a businessman. Well, Sheikh, listen, I don't know how to lecture. I don't know how to participate, but I can give you money. So take this money. I have lots of it. You can be a scholar like myself. I just talk. I have nothing to do. I just talk and speak and people listen. So I'm a good salesman. I sell Jannah, huh? who's buying? So this is my profession. I'm good in convincing people. I'm good in presenting my point and ID with the grace of Allah Azza wa Everyone has something. Someone has nothing except the ability to drive. So Zallah khair, he brings me from the airport to the lecture, to the hotel, then back to the airport. No one else could do the job. So he's rewarded for whatever I give, whatever I speak. He's rewarded because this is his ability. So never underestimate, but don't cross your borders and say, no, I want to go to the Amazon. I want to go to the jungles of Africa. I want to go to Siberia. No, this is not part of the da'wah and Allah knows best. <clears throat> you can't. In the hadith of Hanzalah al-Asdi, and this is reported in Sahih al-Imam Muslim, he met Abu Bakr once, and he said, how are you, Hanzalah? Hanzalah replied, I have become a hypocrite. Abu Bakr said, A'udhu Billah. Why are you saying this? He said, well, when I go to the Prophet والسلام, he reminds us of Allah, I feel that I am almost flying in heaven. But the moment I go back to my home and to my farm and I meet my wives and the children and, and, and get involved in business, I don't recognize my heart anymore. Abu Bakr said, Wallahi, <laughs> this is how I feel. It makes two of us, let's go and rush to the Prophet ﷺ. So they went to the Prophet and the Prophet said, ﷺ, how are things? So he repeated, I have become a hypocrite. And when he explained, he said, the Prophet said, by Allah, if your Iman's level with me is similar to your Iman's level, when you go and meet your families, the angels will descend in broad daylight and shake hands with you. You will be able to see them because this is a high, high level of Iman. But, Alhamdulillah, one hour and one hour. Meaning, you can't maintain the same level of Iman. This is, you know, heart, heart patients, they give them a pill called Concord. What is Concord for? To keep your heart rate at a certain level. It cannot go exceeded. So it's always by 130, 125. If you run, when you reach 125, 130, you feel, okay, the system is down, I have to sit. 
When you go to a heart surgeon said, why is this? They say, because it's like a car. If you keep on high, high rev, you will consume the engine and it will die soon. So because you're a heart surgeon, a heart patient, we reduce your heart rate so that it would not exhaust itself. Likewise, if you have a very, very high level of Iman, you may burn out. So this is Allah's favor upon us that Iman fluctuates, goes up and down. You try to keep it consistent, but you will never have it at the peak ever, forever. Because then you will become a prophet or a messenger. It has to go up and down. So we try our level best and thrive to keep it up. But sometimes it cannot reach that level. So we try to be as consistent as possible. And Allah knows best. <coughs> Again and again and again. Someone who comes to you with a severe migraine or headache, you give them two Panadols or Tylenol. The headache is gone for six hours. He said, wow, this is magic. Sakallah khair. But after six hours, it comes back again. Give them another two Panadols and another two and another two for a whole week. Have you helped him? No. Because I've managed to heal the symptoms, but not the real illness. He might have cancer. He might have an, in an infection. He might have something serious. The symptom is the headache. So now your relative who's celebrating anniversary or birthday or whatever, your relative who doesn't wear the hijab, your relative who shaves his beard, your relatives who misses salat every now and then. These are symptoms. You can't keep on solving and curing the symptom. You have to look where the illness is. So you have to increase their iman. You have to show them the true meaning of the beautiful names of Allah. You have to remind them of the pillars of iman and how there is a day of judgment and how there is heaven and hell. Make them fear Allah Azza wa Jal that would cure the disease and the symptoms as well. The next question is, what are the best resources for a learning Arabic? A boy or a girl? If it's a boy, marry him. <laughs> no, I was joking. No, don't marry anyone. Stay single. But this, I was joking again. Uh, I don't know. I'm an Arab, so how would I know? I'm an Arab. How would I know how to learn Arabic? If you ask me about English or any other language, I would say go to the country, live there for six months, don't communicate in your own language. And if I want to learn, learn Spanish, I'd go to Madrid. Maybe Madrid is awful. I go to Barcelona, I go to Palma de Mallorca, I go to Malaga, I, anywhere. I'll go to a place in Spain I would sit and not speak English or Arabic, communicate with the people, buy newspaper in Spanish every day alongside Arabic newspapers or English newspaper. And read, this happened in here and there. This happened here and there. This happened here and there. And read it in Spanish. Now I know what happened. And I'm reading the article, but in Spanish, mm, I think this means this, this means this. And take classes. In three months' time, you'll be good. A lot of the people go to Egypt, go to Jordan, and do this for six months. Go to a college, go to an academy, and stop speaking in English completely. And okay, they will learn Isaiah, Ahlan wa Sahlan. What is this? This is Egyptian Arabic. It's 80% Arabic. When you speak Kuwaiti, is this Arabic? This is not Arabic. If you speak Saudi, this is Arabic. This is 70%, 80%. But at least it says Arabic. You're learning a lot from the Quran because the vast majority of it is from Arabic. But once you do this and you get it in your system, stop communicating. The problem is that when you go five of you to this country, to Egypt, 
and you all speak English throughout the whole day. Cooking and, 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 and hanging out and, well, you'll never know Arabic, go alone. Or take a pledge not to speak your native language and you will be able, inshallah, to learn. <clears throat> I don't have any. I can't tell you what is my, who are my favorite du'at because in my life I've noticed that remaining steadfast is very challenging. I have so many friends du'at who flipped like a fish. So if I tell you X, Y, Z is good da'i and next month he has a scandal of going out with a girl. If I say this da'i is number one and next month, wallah, he took money from charity and bought his new Bugatti. <laughs> so I can't trust people in the sense that I cannot recommend them. I, I have so many, I have good relationship with all du'at. They're all my friends. But can I say that I vouch for this guy? I don't know him, I, I can't guarantee people all du'at are good, inshallah. Ask him. Ask him for permission. Du'at is a ruler of da'i. Da'i is a caller of Islam. So I am a da'i. And the plural of me is du'at. Who said this? What did you read? Dua. So he's right. <laughs> yeah, he wasted my time. Yeah. <laughs> this is difficult. Yani, I personally believe and, and, and strongly embrace the dua of Prophet Yunus. I think in the subcontinent they call it Kalima Tayyiba. No? Kalima Sharifa, Kalima, something Kalima. La ilaha illa anta subhanak. Inni kuntum min al-dhalimin. This, subhanallah, I, whenever I'm in a, a trouble, whenever I'm in a queue, whenever I have dua, you just say it. Because what did he ask? Nothing. <coughs> He's in the belly of the whale. What you would say, get me out. Give me this, give me that. No. He says, la ilaha illa ant. There is no God worthy of being worshipped except you. Subhanak, glorify be to you. Inni kuntum min al-dhalimeen. I confess that I was among the wrongdoers. Khalas. And Allah Azza wa set him free. So this is one of the most beautiful dua. Um, the Prophet Sallallahu said, the most beloved words to Allah after the Quran. Nothing is more beloved to Allah after the Quran except this. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. This is hadith sahih, the most beloved to Allah. So whenever I'm walking from here to the car, or when I'm at the gym, or when I'm walking around the uh, swimming pool to get some uh, sunlight and to get the heart working, that's, it's, it's already dead. So I say this, and I try to finish a hundred of them a day because of the hadith of Um Hani bin Abi Talib. And we've mentioned this in uh, the Fortress of the Muslim. And the third one, Rab, uh, uh, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana, wa qina adab al-nar. The Prophet used to say it between the Rukn al-Yamani and al-Hajr al-Aswad. So these are three. And Allah knows best. The next question is, uh, what is your advice to people to soften their heart? Use softener. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Softening your heart is related to a number of factors. Number one, remembering death. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, I used to forbid you from visiting cemeteries. Now, go and visit it, because it reminds you of the hereafter. When you go to a cemetery, you forget everything. You forget your wealth, your wife, your children. This is my final abode. This is my final destination. Also, the Prophet said, 
said to one of his companions, would you like to attain what you want from Allah and soften your heart? The companion, companion said, yes. The Prophet said, wipe over the head of an orphan. When you show and express your mercy to orphans and wipe over their head out of mercy, Allah Azza wa would soften your heart. And reading the Quran definitely soften your hearts, making dhikr soften your hearts, visiting the, the, the sick and the patients soften your hearts. So many things would soften your heart and get you closer to Allah Azza wa Dua is one of the main reasons for softening your heart. When you say, Ya muqallib al qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik and the likes. And Allah knows best. The last two questions. Uh, what is your advice to escape from Riyadh al Shura? This is one of the tricky questions because each and every one of us has to be sincere. And one of the dua that the Prophet used to teach us, alayhi salatu wasalam, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ushrika bika wa ana a'lam wa astaghfiruka lima la a'lam. I seek refuge in you that I would associate others with you while knowing it, but sometimes I don't know it, so I ask for forgiveness for what I don't know. And Riyah, a lot of the time, is part of what I do not know. Why is it tricky? Because shaitan plays a huge role in messing you up. So many of the deeds, you're sincere. But he says, mm, maybe you're not. And so many people come to me in counseling. They say, Sheikh, I have problems with sincerity. Every time I want to do something, I get the idea that Maybe I'm not. What if I'm not sincere? So I say to them, ignore. I say, Sheikh, we can't ignore this. It's too difficult. It's too deeply rooted in our hearts. So I say to them, do you have a mother? And they say, yes. Do you love your mother? I said, yes, of course. I hug her and I kiss her every single day. I say, what if she's your adopted mother and she found you at the steps of the masjid? Do you have a DNA to prove her that she's your mother? Because I said, uh, no. So what are you going to do? Are you going to stop hugging her and kissing her? I said, no, Sheikh. Why? Because I know she's my mother. How? We look alike. So, pff, you look like 100 million uh, uh, individuals. You have two eyes, one nose. What do you mean you look alike? She may be your uh, uh, uncle's uh, wife. You never know. So again, if you open the door for what if, you're not going to live. I made wudu and I'm in the first row of praying. And I've seen this myself. I was in Syria once. I went to make wudu and the guy next to me was almost washed, not making wudu. He was there before I came in and he was there after I left. And after maybe 10, 15 minutes, he came all wet to stand in the row. The iqam is giving. Allah Akbar Allah. The guy said, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And we finished three rakahs and he's still doing Allahu Akbar. Wallahi, he did not start. Akhi, what's wrong with you? You have a problem? Yani, yeah, your carburetor is not fixed or we can. He said, every time I start prayer, I get these whispers that what if my Allahu Akbar is not right? I get people in counseling sessions, they make me crack in laughter. He said, Sheikh, I recite the Fatiha and I repeat it and I repeat my Salah 20 to 30 times. Why? He said, because I make mistakes. He said, okay, recite the Fatiha for me. And he recites the Fatiha perfectly. Okay, Fatiha was good. I said, no, yes, to you it's good. But in Salah, I say, غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُ What are you doing, Akhi? What is it? You're crazy. And he repeats, and he's suffocating. Akhi, 
This is not Islam. You're practicing a different religion, with all due respect. This, and says, I, I don't know if you say Alhamdulillah or Alhamdulillah, and they stress themselves. And I say, all of this is not from Islam. And he says, Sheikh, this is not the funny part. I said, come on, there's a funny part? He said, yes. He said, what's the funny part? He said, Sheikh, this is my struggling in silent prayer. <laughs> You're making me nuts, Sakhi. You're doing this in silent prayer? He said, yes, I'm just trying to say غيري. And who does this in silent prayer? It's not silent anymore. He said, no, no, even when I'm not making a sound, I'm trying to make the sound come from the makhraj. You're crazy, Akhi. You need to go to a, a, a lunatic uh, psychiatric uh, ward. This is how shaitan messes up with you. With Ria, it's the same thing. Oh, Sheikh, my intention, I don't know if my intention is good, my intention is bad. I have to repeat, oh, Sheikh, what do you do? I stand and I make intention. I said, okay, do you have a car? He says, yes. He says, okay, when you go to ride your car, what is your intention before opening the door and starting it? I just go in and start it. So, this is your intention. Do it in Salah. Is that easy? Yes. Yeah, Islam is the religion of simplicity and ease. Why are you making life difficult? So the issue of sincerity is in the heart. So if I ask you, are you praying to impress Sheikh Asim? Said, no, Astaghfirullah, I'm praying for Allah. And that's, that's it. But how would I ensure, how would I make it certain? What if, this is shaitan. Ignore it and move on all psychi psychiatrists and psychologists in the world, Muslim and Kafir, and all shiuch in the world say, your medicine, your healing is dependent on a six letter word. And this is ignore. Whatever feelings you get, ignore it and move on because shaitan wants to chain you to the ground. And Allah knows best. go to Fortress of the Muslim. I did a workshop on the whole book. With the grace of Allah, it's in Arabic and in English. I cannot re repeat all of that in here. In the section, in the Fortress of Muslim, the, the orange book, you will find that the Afkar of sleep, you recite it, it's all in Arabic and English, and you can read it, inshallah. I think, I think we took photos yesterday. Yeah. Khalas. Huh? I didn't understand it. So you don't get it. 